the Dim Din Podcast, a safe space to talk about misconceptions, perceptions, assumptions, and frustrations. Join us for conversations and stories that explore how embracing our differences leads to a balanced, strong, and harmonious world. Hello and welcome to a special episode of the Dim Din Podcast, your very safe space to have co- to have conversations about misconceptions, perceptions, assumptions, and frustrations amongst Africans here in the diaspora. I am your host, Becca, AKA the Sierra Median. Today I have with me two amazing guests. We were supposed to be five, but we are down to three because life happens and we hold no grudges. (laughs) But I have with me two amazing guests who I'm going to pass it on to um, introduce themselves and then I will give you some insights on what today's episode is about. Uh, on my near right, I have Auntie Diane, originally from Guyana, Guyana and Jibril on my far right from Sierra Leone. Ladies first, please tell us a little bit more about yourself and one fun fact or historical fact about Guyana. So Diane Hector, mother of two grown young men and wife of Jocelyn Hector, who we all know as Uncle Jocelyn in the, in the community. Mm-hmm. Um, and for myself, I too am privileged to be a part of the Sierra Leone Association mm-hmm. of Alberta and am willing to volunteer in whatever role I am asked to in service uh, t- of the community. So fun fact about Guyana, or a fact about Guyana. Guyana is a small South American uh, country, a uh, previous uh, British colony. We are now a republic, actually, and making great strides on, on the world scene in that we um, are now, uh, I think, the 15th highest producer of oil in the world. So yay, Guyana. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's yeah. amazing. Yes, we discovered all about 20, uh, 2005, 2005, mm-hmm. and it has been a roller coaster since then. Mm. Man, we're, we're so proud of what's happening back home ah. right now in terms, of, in terms of development. Yes, it's awesome. And honestly, if most Guyanans are as determined and hardworking and as and they pay attention to details as much as you do, I am not surprised that you're able to achieve that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Generally, we're, we're very hardworking, conscientious, mm. honest people and Beautiful. just looking for, for the best that life could offer us and for the best that we could offer to whatever situation we are in as well at the time. Wow. Yeah, so wow. that is a, the fabric of, of the Guyanese psyche. As, mm. as such, we're yeah, very hardworking. And, and proud people, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> As you should be, hey. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Of course. Thank you very much, Auntie Daya. Over to you, gentlemen. <laughs> um, yes, uh, my name is Jibril Vendi mm-hmm. from Sierra Leone. Mm-hmm. I um, arrived here in Edmonton in 2019, and ever since I have given up my time for the Sierra Leone community. You know, I have been volunteering ever since, you know. I took part in the uh, mentorship program during the COVID pandemic where we were mentoring um, middle school, high school, and elementary kids here. Mm. And then I also opted to serve on the, um, on the elections commission, on the elections team, um, 2022 mm-hmm. and then 2024. Aha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. One fun fact about Sierra Leone or historical fact? A uh, historical fact about Sierra Leone. Um, Sierra Leone gained independence. Um, sorry, I will start off from the. Um, uh, Sierra Leone became a British Crown colony mm-hmm. in 1808 and gained independence in 1961. So hmm. we were ruled by the British for over 150 years. Wow. See, I admire people who know numbers because I just shy away from those things. <laughs> I try not to cram <laughs> So we should know how long we were ruled by the queen, I'm right? I'm <laughs> just like, I'm relying on you for that fact. Yeah. Thank you very much. 1808 <laughs> to 1961. Now wow. you know. Now we know. Wow. <laughs> but but <laughs> Thank here, you. there's one thing that's common right there. One thing, and okay. I know there are lots of other things that's common between 
Sierra Leone and Guyana because we were both former uh, British colonies Absolutely. And, as, as well. And, and you know, just going back into history a little bit, mm -hmm. we're thinking that a lot of, because there was a lot of sugarcane plantations and, and gold mining and stuff in, in Guyana, which was British Guyana at the time, mm -hmm. and history is showing that a lot of the labor for those sugar plantations in terms of slaves mm -hmm. came from Sierra Leone. Oh, yeah, yeah, history is showing that. So there, are, there are probably some Connection. relatives there. there, is, there ah. is. You know, my son actually did my 23 and me, mm -hmm. and, and he discovered through that that the Williamses, the, um, the Roberts, the, the Johnsons, we have, there is line, there is bloodline to those mm. names. Right. Um, from Yes, yeah, so, so there is something. As a matter of fact, he did say there was like 53 or 58 percentage of, of links to Sierra Leone Hi. in our family. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Well, okay. So, so explains a lot of things. Technically, go back to history. <laughs> We might all be Sierra Leoneans after uh -huh. all. <laughs> <laughs> There's okay. something there. There's something there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now to the topic of the day. About a week ago? Was it a week ago that we yes, had it? Yes, it was okay. last Saturday. Last Saturday, yeah. August 10th, yeah. About a week ago, we came together as a team of five, to I'm um, absent right now, to conduct the community elections for the Sierra Leone Association of Alberta community. And how we came about being a part of that team was, um, Auntie Diane here was um, selected. It was a community meeting decision. I okay. was I was proposed by the executive at the time. Okay. Uh, the proposal went to a community meeting, mm -hmm. and the community meeting accepted the proposal, and so I was appointed. Wonderful. So you were appointed um, after that process, and you sent out. Um, it, it was like we had to apply for the position. Yes. Right? Yeah, and actually went through an interview because I remember the <laughs> process. But this was about four years ago. That this happened. Almost originally, yeah. Yeah, just about four years ago. And uh, so we conducted that, which was supposed to be an election, but turned out to be something else. And this time, we also came together to conduct this community election. Now, during the process, a lot happened. A lot happened. Um, but we chose to stay focused on the task, on the goal that we had, and to execute an amazing job, which we ended up doing. Now, we decided that it was now a good time, or it is now a good time, to have a conversation about what was going on behind the scenes. Some of the things we heard about ourselves, <laughs> about the process, that we chose not to give attention to at that time, because we did not want to be distracted. Now, to those of you who are not part of the Sierra Leonean community here in in Edmonton or in Alberta, you, you might be wondering why is this an important topic. I think what we have to share about this whole process is beneficial not just for the Sierra Leonean community, for all other communities. Um, and there's a lot that can be taken out of this to implement as needed, a, a lot of tin bits anyways. But enough about explaining what this is about. Let's go right down to it. Um, We'll start with you, Auntie Daya. There, there, there is a few questions that community members had. And I'm going to look here to see, to quote the exact questions that they had so we can try and flush out some of those questions a Absolutely. little bit. Absolutely, yes. Okay, so we'll start with our very first question, which was an allegation around the bylaws of the community of the association not being used by the commission to run the election. Over to you, Mrs. Hec um, Hector or Auntie Diane. Why did the commission decide to do that, if we did? Thanks. That's a very important question, mm -hmm. Patricia. Mm -hmm. Because I'll start off by saying that the commission did not at all disregard the bylaws. We were very, very conscious of the bylaws and, and, what, it, and what it says. And I'm, I'm thinking that the references to the bylaws has to do 
with um, with two articles and has to do with disqualifying uh, one of the candidates mm -hmm. because we did receive petitions mm -hmm. that referenced the bylaws um, in the petition to disqualify one of the candidates on the grounds of attendance at meetings and on the grounds of financial um, impropriety. Mm -hmm. Now, we did not, if I can say it a hundred times or a thousand times, I will say it, we did not disrespect the bylaw. We did not do anything outside of what the bylaw says. Um, as a matter of fact, with regards to, to, those two, um, to those two points that were raised, mm -hmm. the first one with, um, with attendance at meetings, we carefully considered that. We very carefully considered it, and what we heard from the community was, look, at meetings, when meetings were held, families mm -hmm. and friends got together in different, in their homes and in different places as a group, and they attended meetings. Now, they said there were cases where seven or eight or maybe nine or ten persons were in a room at the meeting, mm -hmm. but only one of those persons would have actually used their ID to log into the meeting. Mm -hmm. We can't say that only that person was e at the meeting when all the other eight or seven persons in the room at the time would have also been there. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, um, we, we could not validate that claim in the petition based on those very grounds, mm -hmm. the information we got from the community. The second reference to the bylaw mm -hmm. had to do with one of the candidates impropriety uh, financially based on a role they had in the previous leadership team. Mm -hmm. Again, um, we examined the string of email that would have taken place between um, what is now the past president or who is now the past president and the president elect. There was a string of emails between the two of them, and there was also, in that string, there was also an email from the financial secretary. Mm -hmm. We examined those emails, but the most important part of the examination was a voice message that was posted by the financial secretary mm -hmm. to the WhatsApp forum, mm -hmm. which clearly, clearly outlined the sequence of events that took place over time with regards to the, the, the where that money was and what was happening with it. In the final analysis, the financial secretary made it very, very clear that there was no misdeed with the money. The money was collected by himself and the money was deposited in the bank account of the Sierra Leone Association of Alberta. Mm -hmm. There is no way in that process where it was said that the money could not be found or that the, the person who the allegation was being made against denied having the money. The person accepted uh, all the time and owned up that they had the money in their possession. It was just um, issues with the logistics in terms of handing the money over mm -hmm. to the financial secretary. Mm -hmm. So based on that, again, we examined the issue. And again, we could not validate the claim because um, it, 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 was, it was invalid. Okay. We could not validate it. Beautiful, beautiful. So what you're saying then is that we did follow the bylaws and we did not just choose to do things of the way we wanted to. That is what I'm saying. Beautiful. That is what I'm saying. We did follow the bylaws. Um, and, and the result of, of our following the bylaw mm -hmm. and of our investigating the claims mm -hmm. is what it is. We, the bylaw spoke and we listened, but we, we did. We did follow the bylaw. Beautiful, beautiful. And um, I think as someone who was or is very active in my community and I make time to attend meetings, I can say for a fact that I attended those meetings. And there were times when I had someone by, by my side, like either myself, um, my brother, and an extra person in the house, three of us. But my camera would be turned off because Zoom taught us how to multitask, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how several people mm -hmm. be um, behind the scenes. So I definitely can see where people are coming from, myself included, where we would say there are more than one people um, or one person be behind that camera. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember a time where they ever did a roll call. I don't either. I don't remember a time. So I definitely agree 
with all of those species. But to give us a bit of a context here, um, when we put out, because um, the processes were all very detailed. Oh, yes. Very, oh, yes. very detailed. They were. Like they written were. details as oh, well. Yes, right? Posted to the platform. <laughs> Posted <laughs> to the platform. <laughs> and there were dates for every step of the process. Yes. And every date was followed to, to the, the T. <laughs> <laughs> to the T. Um, so when, the, when the, the notice was put out there for um, candidates who were interested to send in their nominations, offer people to nominate them and stuff. We had about four nominations, was it? Yes, we did. Yes. We did have four nominations. Mm -hmm. And all four um, nominations were approved. Um, and at some point, two of those four withdrew the, was it? Yes. Yes. Two, two persons withdrew their, their candidacy. Right. Yes. So we ended up with two. With two. One of the two um, is or was a member of the outgoing executive? Was the secretary general or so? Yeah, I, I think not this current round of leadership, but the one before. Like, yeah, he was, that person was in the, the first uh, administration, the first administration. This right. administration had a, a few terms, right? Right. So, so this person, mm -hmm. um, who is who contested on August tenth? Because we had he one male and one female. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the male who contested on August tenth mm -hmm. was a part of the previous but one administration. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that is where and that is where the question of the financial or the allegation came of the from. financial impropriety came from because of a of a task that he was um, given. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And the female candidate then was. Um, a part of the outgoing um, executive up until August. when the yeah. nomination was was approved and um, there was word out there for her to um, withdraw her her participation in that um, executive. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's actually another um, <laughs> that's actually another another point another for this, <laughs> another point for discussion. Yeah, because the the, the other female candidate, yeah, uh -huh. at the time was a member of the of the, um, this outgoing executive, and um, and a request was sent for that person to, be, and the person was also an administrator on the WhatsApp forum. forum yes. So a request was sent mm -hmm. to her mm -hmm. and um, and to the leadership asking for um, for her to recuse herself yeah. from from that role. Mm -hmm. And it took quite a while. As a matter of fact, it took maybe one or two reminders yes. that that should be that that should be the case. Mm -hmm. That, that that person should not be mm -hmm. um, operating in that role as a candidate mm -hmm. for the presidency. Okay, okay, beautiful. So then we were left with these two candidates, one of whom was still part of the outgoing executive up until they, re they um, complied or they chose to do what we had asked them to do, and another who was part of Th that outgoing executive, but a while back. And there were some accusations or some concerns that the commission was, the independence of the commission was being suppressed by the outgoing executive. Did we at any point feel like our independence was compromised or was suppressed? Um, yes, I want to agree to that. Okay. Um, at some point in time, I believe that um, the independence of the commission was um, challenged. Okay. Um, point being, um, the first the first experience we had was when we opened the um, the elections platform, mm -hmm. where we were supposed to share information with the general membership. That didn't go down well with the outgoing executive. Mm -hmm. They um, they challenged that on the main WhatsApp group. And they call names there, and they were, you know, kind of like saying things that were not really supposed to be said by an uh, by an executive that you know appointed the commissioner who is, you know, running the election. You know, so I I felt strongly that they challenged the independence of the commission at that point. Okay. And for me, the um, the petitions and the legal advice that came in, these are normal things, you know. I don't feel like there was anything there that pressured us. Mm -hmm. But at the end, when I saw the, um, the video released by the outgoing president, mm. I also felt strongly that, wow, 
you know <laughs> this is like our independence has been challenged here as well mm -hmm. because we are supposed to be running this election and um, for whatever reason if someone is not happy about the outcome of the election there are all the avenues uh, or the ways to uh, address those concerns but not a day to the election or a few days to the election and you ask the commission not to run the election because there is only one eligible candidate Mm -hmm. I felt strongly that that was, uh, he crossed the line there, you know, by challenging the independence of the commission at that point. Beautiful, beautiful. Were there any other times you felt like the independence was suppressed, Auntie Diana? I, I definitely support what, what Gabriel, um, mm -hmm. Gabriel just said. And, and I want to, he mentioned the, the, the opinions. Um, the legal opinions, oh yes, we got opinions. Everybody's entitled to an opinion, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that, that's a basic democratic right. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're, we're entitled to opinions. But I want to share an interesting, um, an interesting event. Okay. A couple of days before the elections, uh, I, at about 8.30 at night, I was hand delivered uh, an envelope from, um, from council, from a legal council. Oh. It, it, yes, in, yes, indeed. But it gets more interesting than that. Um, I opened up the, the envelope after the, the, the messenger had left, the person who delivered it had left. And um, I opened it up and, and looked at it and said, oh, um, this is a mistake. This is a big mistake. Because the petition was addressed to the elections commissioner of the Sierra Leone Association of Edmonton. And I said, oh, okay. <laughs> 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 okay, this is not meant for me. This <laughs> because, I, I mean, I had to stop. Okay, no, no. My team, I'm the head of a team that's, that's named the Sierra Leone, Leone Association of Alberta. Oh <laughs> Nonetheless, um, just doing due diligence mm -hmm. because of the fact that, that one of the candidates' name was mentioned in the, in the, um, the legal opinion, mm -hmm. I am... Um, we decided to forward it to him so that he will be aware mm -hmm. of of what was going on. Um, I yes, there were there were other times too, um, or other actions too that that made me feel that the um, that the actions or the work of the of the um, of the elections commission was being was being um, suppressed. suppressed. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. um, and it has to do it has to do. Um, it, it has to do with the fact that, oh, I, I'll, mention, I'll mention an example of, of one of those things. Now, yes, we, we are an independent and autonomous body, mm -hmm. and our focus is, is doing the, the work, the job that we were, the, that we were, were hired to do. Mm -hmm. um, but that being said, we still need, we still need support. Mm -hmm. from from the community mm -hmm. and from various aspect elements of the community and and of course we're running the election on behalf of um, SLAA and and their their financial um, requirements to do to do a job like that mm -hmm. so um, it came time to get the budget approved mm. for the um, for the elections and um, I, we diligently set about outlining what what it was going to cost for us to to run the elections. Um, I forwarded a request to the outgoing president, mm -hmm. requesting the amount of money that we needed to run the elections. Mm -hmm. And I got a call from um, from the outgoing president, which which really really made me um, question uh, what was going on. Um, okay, I made it, let me make it very clear mm -hmm. that as an expenditure officer, you, your, your diligence is to ensure that whatever you're signing off on is, um, is appropriate mm -hmm. and that the money that you're responsible for is well spent. Mm -hmm. But I felt, I felt humiliated mm -hmm. as a professional when I was questioned about the cost of pop and the cost of water and... Um, and, and the cost of, well, we, we had requested T-shirts because, you know, we wanted to, pref uh, to appear professional mm -hmm. on that day. And I was questioned about the cost of the T-shirts. Um, and, and I was questioned, one of, the, one of the lines on there had to do with legal, legal opinions or legal services. Mm -hmm. And I was questioned about um, the, the, the legal services 
um, that we were that we were um, requesting. Um, that made me feel as though there was no support mm. because I mean we're we're responsible um, individuals. We're doing a job, and and there was nothing to my mind in that budget that could not be um, could not be substantiated, could not be explained. Mm -hmm. But then when I was asked to explain about the cost of pop, to explain about the cost of water, to explain about the cost of t-shirts, that, that made me feel very uncomfortable. Mm. That made me feel very uncomfortable. Okay, okay. And that's a question that community members have that will come back to as to why we did not use the, uh, as to the budget was not approved, what did we use to run the election? But we'll come back oh. to that. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. think <laughs> I, I I think personally, from my <laughs> point of view, to add to all of that piece about um, whether or not we feel suppressed or challenged, I think going down to like two, three days to the election, um, having that video um, released by the president, but not only that, having an audio released by the campaign manager of the female candidates, and having the ca the female candidates send a message out to her supporters to say, there's no elections, I'm now the, the president, um, don't go out to vote, like that election oh. process is not valid anymore. I personally felt like all, all of that was an attempt to suppress or to challenge the commission's um, independence during that whole process. But we'll come back to the questions. So maybe let's just clear that whole piece about the buy, uh, about the 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 budget there was a budget like you said you submitted it it was scrutinized to the point where you felt humiliated but it still was not approved no no it still Tell was us not about approved. that it still was not approved i i think the outgoing president actually made a statement um i i think uh, there was a video yeah, in the statement video released, and, and yeah, the outgoing the president yeah. made a, a statement that the budget was not approved because um, because we did not follow the bylaws, mm. I, I think I think so. Mm. Don't I don't. Think what was there was um, because there is no need for an election. Ah, because that's right. We mm. have only there one only eligible one candidate. Yes, eligible yes. candidate. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's right. But we never determined. We we never determined that uh, that any candidate was was ineligible. Mm -hmm. When we when we I, I, I'm sorry I'm repeating this again. I said it before. Mm -hmm. When when we examined um, the, the the points that were put forward or the reasons that were put forward uh, with, with the petition to disqualify the candidate, we couldn't validate them. Absolutely. Based on the facts, we couldn't validate those reasons. Absolutely. So so the candidate remained on the register. Mm -hmm. And there's rumors then that we are so generous as a commission and we were so desperate and determined, we decided to use our own personal funds to run the election. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, th that, is <laughs> that, that is a very that is a very interesting way of, of putting it. Um, <laughs> what I would like to say about that mm -hmm. is that, um, and I told you guys, I told you guys how how very honored I felt working with all of you, mm -hmm. yourself, Patricia, yourself, Gabriel, um, Uncle Bill, Mr. Clark, and Matilda. Um, we had a job to do. The, the Sierra Leone Association of Alberta, the community was depending on the commission mm -hmm. to deliver, to do a job, to, to, to deliver it. Mm -hmm. um, in our conscience, we couldn't um, 72 hours before the election say that we don't have money to run the elections, we're not gonna do it. Mm -hmm. we, we couldn't say that. For that very, for that reason, um, no. So we talked about it, and um, everybody, we agreed that, okay, um, a member is gonna take this, a member is gonna take <laughs> that, <laughs> and we are going to deliver. And I remember saying, I remember saying to, to the meeting, um, okay, um, whoever the new administration is, mm -hmm. who, who is coming in, we, we're gonna keep our bills, we're gonna keep our receipts. I mean, we don't know, it might be two years from now, and those <laughs> and those credit card um, charges may have gathered interest. <laughs> 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 we, we don't know, but we're gonna keep our bills. We're gonna keep our receipts. And when the when the new um, leadership is is um, installed, then we are going to present 
our our claims for for reimbursement mm -hmm. um, for reimbursement to them um, but then it just if, if you well if you guys were a part of the team but for for persons who are listening now to this podcast mm -hmm. um, if you would have seen the if you would have seen the, the videos coming out of of that day there was a lot of of, of um, expenses that went with with running the elections there was a security guard detail there, there was stationery like beautifully done um, ballot papers with their faces on them. Yeah, faces on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got their headshots. Yeah. We got their headshots. We, we put them in there. I mean, there there were privacy screens that were bought from um, from the stationery store. There were pens and pencils. There were you know even the little fun tokens that we used right. uh, <laughs> when we were doing the proxy. The proxy but thing. The, you yes. know, we developed that little system for the all of those things cost money. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and it had to come. It had to come from somewhere, and we had to do the election. We could not say to the community um, on Wednesday or Thursday that we can't run the election because we don't have a budget. Mm -hmm. We couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We couldn't do that. Wonderful, wonderful. So we did do what we had to do to, uh, to continue with the process, but the goal or the intention is to hand that receipt over to the incoming government yes. and get our refund back. Okay. So, <coughs> before me. we go over to the next question, I just want to say, like, what I found most fa um, fascinating about the whole process was that there was a time when we were, I think the direction we were given or the, in following, I don't even know if that's following the bylaws, but there was a time when the people added to the WhatsApp platform that we created for the elections was people that were on the SLLE platform. And if you were not on the SLA platform, then you will not be on the um, WhatsApp platform. While we waited for the lists of um, registered members that we had asked for so we can determine people's eligibility to vote. Um, but that list took forever, and we never really did get it. Um, and then Uncle Bill, because <laughs> some people were like, well, we really want to join the platform, mm -hmm. um, and we've been waiting to join for a while. And yet, other people who were on the WhatsApp uh, plat uh, on the WhatsApp forum that were added to the platform were choosing to delete themselves from the platform. Um, I think especially s some members of the outgoing executive were choosing to delete themselves. Uh, so there was this time when Uncle Bill was like, I just woke up one morning, made coffee, and decided it was a good idea to just add everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Add everybody to the platform. That was one of my most <laughs> fun moments. <laughs> I was like, yes, yes. Because I think we had had a lot of uh, um, deliberations about mm -hmm. whether or not we were going to allow everybody, especially given that we had waited so long and been mm -hmm. so patient with the outgoing um, executive to give us this list that we were supposed to do, use to do our work independently and didn't feel like that list was ever going to come. But coming to you, Jibril, there is an accusation that we registered 800 <laughs> members of the community. And of those 800 people, most of them were from different parts of Canada, different parts of Africa, non Sierra Leoneans. Is this true? Well, that's not true. Okay. Yeah, because um, every step along the way, we were very meticulous. Mm -hmm. We published the list of every individual within the community that opted to participate in the elections. Mm -hmm. We published those names. And um, the entire membership had access to those lists. Mm -hmm. They went through the list. So it's still on our platform. <laughs> <laughs> I think someone can go there and count when it's up to 800, <laughs> right? They're even numbered. Yeah, they're numbered, so it's still on our platform. In alphabetical so order. <laughs> In alphabetical <laughs> order. In alphabetical order, yeah. So someone can go there right now and go check it out to see whether it's up to 800. That is one point I have to come against. No, we didn't have up to 800. I could say we had a little over 500, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, with regards to the nationality of those that um, we are registered, I believe everyone on that list is a Sierra Leonean, mm -hmm. you know, because that message, that um, 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 registration request went out 
for Sierra Leoneans. Mm -hmm. And the commission also put measures in place to scrutinize um, the, the eligibility or the um, mm -hmm. kind of like the nationality of people coming in, right? Mm -hmm. So we had to bring in three seniors within the community to come help mm -hmm. identify the members walking in to vote, mm -hmm. you know. And that was another step we took to take care of. Maybe somebody can come and say, I'm from Sierra Leone and we don't know the person, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we took three members who have been in this community for a very long time mm -hmm. and can be able to identify almost everyone, mm -hmm. right? That's another step we took to say, hey, no, we did not open it up to all <laughs> the <Everyone>. African <laughs> <laughs> all Africans within Edmonton. <laughs> it was purely for Sierra Leoneans. And I, uh, I am quite sure and I believe that only Sierra Leoneans took part in this election. Beautiful, beautiful. And to add to that, as someone who was behind the scenes of like receiving the names and putting that list together, um, I think what people forgot was that some Sierra Leoneans are married to non Sierra Leoneans, right? right. Mm -hmm. And by virtue of being married to a Sierra Leonean um, and registering as a member, if we had gotten that list, makes you eligible to participate in right. that election. Mm -hmm. So some of the names that didn't sound like Kamara and Koroma, that was and Clark. A was <laughs> the camp that was making this this accusation the vice mm. president is actually married to a non Sierra Leonean. So <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay, no more comments <laughs> <laughs> at all. But I did I have to come back to you. Uh, but before before we go, I just want to make a point about that list. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to stress the importance of that list for the further development of the community. Mm -hmm. Now that list is a powerful database mm -hmm. that the, the new leadership can now take and run with it mm -hmm. in terms of, of, of confirming, establishing what the community membership looks like um, going forward. And, and I'm sure, I'm sure that there are other persons living in Alberta who are Sierra Leonean, either by birth or marriage or association, mm -hmm. that have not yet um, made it to that list. Mm -hmm. By their choice, of course, they had the opportunity to do so over the past weeks. But um, for, the, for the incoming leadership, that list is, is a gold mine Beautiful. in terms of, um, of the membership mm -hmm. of the association. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and to top that off then, uh, the question about there is an accusation that we chose to discard. We chose to discard the list of 39 eligible eligible voters mm -hmm. that the outgoing executive gave us to use solely um. for the elections. Is that true? Did we no. choose to discard that? No, <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely not. Um, I, I did receive uh, a list of 37 names from the Secretary oh General, okay. 37, mm -hmm. and, um, and, uh, and then I think I got a follow-up um, email mm. from the outgoing president with regarding the list. And my response was, um, we were happy to get the, the list of 37 names, and we would ensure that those names are added to the list of persons who had self-identified to be uh, to be a part of the of the community election. So we did add mm -hmm. we did add those thirty seven names to the the list that was generated by the commission. Mm -hmm. um, and and you know with regard to that list, I heard there were persons who mentioned that. They are very much a part of the community. They have attended meetings over the past. The, the required, according to the bylaws, mm -hmm. the required number of meetings over the time, but their name is not on the list. I am one of those people. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I am one of them. <laughs> I also heard, I also heard from a credible source, ah, I did not attend, <laughs> <laughs> I did not attend three meetings over the past two years, mm -hmm. but my name is on this list. Nonetheless, we added all of those 37 names mm -hmm. to the, the list that was generated by the community. Beautiful, 
So what you're saying then is that we did not discard the list. In fact, we added or merged the list. And as again, the person that was behind the, the computer, there was even a name that had a first name and said, as shown on Zoom. That name was transferred too. Mm -hmm. So I said, <laughs> <laughs> as seen on Zoom, okay? <laughs> So we, to uh, give more context to the, to the numbers that we got um, and the results of the, the elections, we have um, some stats here that we put together. Do you want to read out those oh stats? Go ahead, or Gabriel, maybe Gabriel can, can do that for us. Do you want me to pass it over to you? Yeah, I can read that. Okay. It's a bit uh, tricky. You might have to go on and off, but... Okay. All right, so we have um, some numbers put together here. Mm -hmm. So the total number of registered voters for this election was 518. Mm -hmm. And then we have the total number of votes casted was 394. Mm -hmm. Those are the total number of votes cast. And the percentage voter turnout the percentage voter turnout, 76.1%. That was great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we have the number of valid vote cast, uh, 291. Mm -hmm. Percentage of valid vote cast from vote casted was 73.9%. Mm -hmm. That's the percentage of the valid vote cast from the total vote that was casted. Mm -hmm. And then the number of invalid votes, we have 103 and the percentage of the invalid vote cast from the votes casted was 261 votes. Beautiful. Do you want me to go down to the presidential candidate? <laughs> no, we keep it there. Yeah, okay. keep it there. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. So to those who had their own analysis, this is the analysis that we are aware of. Um, and before we say our last words, there was an accusation about myself and uh, Matilda the other um, member of the commission that's not here today, we were biased and we were supporters of the other team, the male candidates team. And to answer that, because I would really like to clear that, thank you all for calming me down through the <laughs> throughout the process because <laughs> I was the most fidgety. Let's do something, let's say something. <laughs> like Patricia, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say <laughs> the only side we were on was on the side of the community. And mm -hmm. that's a side that I will not jeopardize for anybody, ever. Mm -hmm. When I sign up to do something, I come in with the mindset that I signed up for something and I have to do my very best to see that through to the very end. And I think that was the mindset that we all had yep. and used to um, execute the process as clean, non-biased as possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, let's take, let's just go around and just say one thing that was most frustrating for you throughout this whole process and one takeaway that you got from this. For me, the, the most frustrating thing was the, um, the attacks mm. that was leveled from the very get-go from the time we launched our platform, mm -hmm. it was like a machine gun of attacks um, coming onto the, onto the SLAA forum. Mm -hmm. um, and those attacks started with then executives of the forum. Um, that was very, very frustrating. Because what they were saying, I, I, but you know, it probably, it probably, n even now as I'm saying it, mm -hmm. maybe it did good for the commission. Mm -hmm. And uh, to the extent that they were saying, we're not supporting you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Because what that validated was that the commission was operating as an independent Body. and autonomous 
a body. Yes. Um, so, so maybe it was a good thing in, <laughs> in, in, in retrospect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe in retrospect, uh -huh. it, it was a good thing. But at the time, it, it was very frustrating. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, that and then, of course, I think that started, that, that legitimized what came after on the, f on the forum. Mm -hmm. Because people were saying, oh, the executive could do that. Yeah. I can do it too. Mm -hmm. And people jumped on that. Mm -hmm. And it was fireworks and disrespect and disregard for what we were doing as a commission. Mm -hmm. That was very frustrating. But, um, but I'm glad that we did this. Hey. Look, we did this. <laughs> we did this. We did this. We did this. We did this. <laughs> we did this. And we banded together. And, and we decided that, no, we're not jumping. Mm -mm. We're not jumping. We, we're doing it to the end. Mm -hmm. Um, the takeaway for me mm -hmm. is that never, ever say never. Woo! Don't ever mm -hmm. give up. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Mm -hmm. As long as you know you're doing the right thing. Yes. As long as you can go to sleep and you're caught. Well, no, lots of nights I went to sleep <laughs> and, <laughs> and I didn't sleep. <laughs> but uh, but once, once your conscience is clear. Yes. Once your conscience is clear and you know you're doing the right thing, keep going. Keep going, mm -hmm. keep going, keep going. Because everything has an expiry date. Beautiful. Everything has an expiry date. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank so you. You're welcome. Beautiful. Over to you. Um, one <laughs> frustration, one takeaway. Yeah, my frustration was from the very go. I felt strongly that we were set to fail, mm. right? Because we started mm. this task, you know, with a goal to get to the finish line and produce the result to the community, right? Mm -hmm. But from the very beginning, I started to feel like, no, we've been set up to fail here, mm. right? Reason being here, one, we started the process, we have a timeline. Mm -hmm. And for each timeline, we needed one very crucial and very important tool. Information. Information. Mm -hmm. And that was not given to us. And, and that's the... That's the list the of eligible voters, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because we, like, from the beginning, we, d we ran this election purely in accordance with the bylaws, right? Mm -hmm. We needed that information mm -hmm. to be able to validate those that have been nominated or that are going to be nominated and those who are going to nominate um, um, candidates. Mm -hmm. We need that to validate them. Mm -hmm. We didn't have that information. Mm -hmm. Right. So why are we not having this information? We should have had it from the very beginning. We didn't have it. Um, we got our platform opened up mm -hmm. and it sent a negative message to um, the administration for which now in retrospect, we felt like, oh, that made us look independent. Mm -hmm. But again, it sent a negative message out there to other members, you know, to other community people, right? Mm -hmm. That, oh, wha why are they opening another We're forum? defiant. Yeah, <laughs> no, you see. And I was like, wow, uh -huh. are they really doing this? Mm. You know? And the lack of support from the administration, mm. because we are not saying that they should be tapping our back while we are going down the lane, but no, they should no. be there to know that they are there to serve the community. They appointed the commissioner, and commissioner set up our team mm -hmm. to serve the same community. Mm -hmm. So we should be working hand in glove mm -hmm. to ensure that the results reflect the will of the people within the community, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, <laughs> I didn't see that. You know, so mm -hmm. those are my few frustrations. And my takeaway, <laughs> well, at the end of the day, <laughs> I was quite relieved mm -hmm. to see that we stood up together as a team mm -hmm. to get to the finish line. Because tha along the way, I felt like maybe we're not going to make it to the finish line, you know. But the, the teamwork, the team spirit, the energy we all had took us to the finish line. Mm -hmm. And that was my biggest takeaway. Beautiful, beautiful. Ah, now to me. Um, you know, my biggest frustration is that, or was that, when, uh, during the first election that we were supposed to run for the outgoing um, executive, um, that ended up on an um, unopposed, um, by like an unopposed victory. It was, yes. it was. And we were part of that. The yep. outgoing executive was very proud of us. Like, they were very <laughs> surprised. Because <laughs> that turned out in their favor, right? right? And it was like, oh, you guys did your job. Well done. And sang praises and stuff. <laughs> and now the same team that you were so proud of at the time, given the way things turned out, um, 
Now you are like, ooh, you're defiant. <laughs> you're not listening. You are going against the bylaws and all of those cases. Right down to the moment of the female candidate advising some of the her supporters not to go to the polling station to vote. I found that very frustrating because here were members who were very excited to exercise their voting rights, to have yeah. a say in who leads them. And yet, 37 members were supposed to make a decision for 517 community members. Why? <laughs> My curious brain is still trying to figure that out. Like, what was the rationale behind that? Who sat down and thought this was a good idea? I still would like to know, as a Sierra Leonean, as, as a young person that's trying to understand some of the systemic um, barriers as I see them. Um, so that was one of my biggest frustration. I think that part two about where the whole reason behind the platform was just to have like a non-flooded space where it was just election related information. Uh, information. For us to have taken that and to, oh, of course, keep us uh, at as an independent body. So for us to have taken that step in the interest of the community, in the interest of independence, in the interest of a non-biased election, and be bashed as much as we were bashed, that was frustrating. I feel like initially it was the community members that were like pushing us to one side with all the accusations. And then towards the end of the race, it was the outgoing executive <laughs> that was like <laughs> pushing <laughs> us to the other side. It was like, we were on the bad side of someone. At all some the time. Point. Right. <laughs> but all of those we did overcome. I think my biggest takeaway from all of this is that it definitely reminded me of some of the structural barriers that we see in every setting. Right? And it reminded me that m m my takeaway is that where two or three are gathered with a mindset of growth, of change, of loyalty, like doing things the right way change is possible. Like people will try to push you down, but if you all are on the same page and you're working in the interest of the community and in the interest of humanity and you trust your conscience through that process, mm -hmm. you'll get through with it. And you all showed me that even though I felt I was the most impatient person in life, I have some patience in me after yeah. that. <laughs> 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 Why so patient? <laughs> So thank you all for taking me as much as you did. Mm -hmm. I hope you <laughs> have enjoyed this conversation and take something away from it. Type down in the comment section what is your takeaway from this conversation and if any moments that we share was frustrating for you. Uh, thank you both very much for joining and gracing the Din Din podcast with this beautiful conversation. Right. Until our next episode. Sabe. San Din Din. Sambe, Sambe,